Here now is Matt Austin and Ginger Gadsden with Florida's Fourth Estate. Sponsored by Light Orlando, delivering hope together. Hey, welcome to another edition of Florida's Fourth Estate. You know, living in the state of Florida, we have this place called Disney World. And some people make some interesting assumptions. And over the years, myths have been created about this place. Is Walt Disney's frozen head somewhere on property? Are there real skeletons in the Pirates of the Caribbean? Ginger, we're going to answer these questions today to the best of our ability. I'm We're going to bring you definitive proof, Matt. Uh, I'm Ginger Gadsden. Why did you make it sound so creepy? Those are You don't think a people. frozen head at Disney is creepy? I mean, it depends on where it is. Yeah, is it, no big you know, deal. Yeah, it's fine. Is it a hot day? A frozen head might be nice. So we're going <laughs> to... <laughs> We're going to answer a lot of these questions. And guess what? We are so lucky that we work with some of the best people in the industry. That's a true and story. There's a guy in our building. Oh, there he is on camera right now. His name is Ken Pilcher. Hi, Ken. Ken is one of our producers, but he is also arguably the best theme park expert in town. Anytime there is a question about something, particularly Disney, but any of the theme parks, but Disney, Ken will know about it. And the history he knows about just the nuances of everything is just so crazy. Ken, I'm going to shut up now so you can say hello. Thank you for joining us. <laughs> Ken, I've been waiting for Ginger to do that for like 10 years. So uh, thank you for making that finally, <laughs> for that finally happen. So we're going to do a countdown of the six craziest myths. True? False? What are they? But these are the things that go around that people talk about. And we're going to start. The very first one we have, Ken, is about those big fat turkey legs <laughs> we see people walking around with all over disney property those calorie and fat machines mm -hmm. they God. look bigger than a normal turkey leg so people assume some people think the myth here is does disney sell emu legs can true oh or false <laughs> uh, it's false those are absolutely turkey legs i looked it up a long long time ago i don't know who the current supplier is but for many years it was a supplier called yokum and they're a turkey farm and they are definitely turkey legs in fact the yokum spokesman person put out a whole press release with the calories and the fat and everything they're like 720 calories each and 36 grams of fat uh oh. the, each one weighs about a, a pound and a half and they were first made popular at places like Renaissance fairs. And now you can get your old caveman groove on it at Walt Disney World when you're walking through the parks. Nice. Man, okay, you couldn't walk through the gate with that because that would be considered a weapon, I think. They wouldn't let you. You can't it's get like through it. It's like a club. So, yes, you yeah, see. TSA won't let you do it. No, <laughs> exactly. So, what I'm hearing from you is that these don't skip leg day. <laughs> they, they, I don't, I don't, they skip leg day because the legs are gone. <laughs> Wait, well, so what kind of are these like, super turkeys like those things are extra big they seem huge turkeys, they're, real, they're really just regular sized turkey legs it's just they look a lot bigger than than you would expect because you the way we picture turkeys is at thanksgiving and whatever and they're a full bird and whatever i mean i'm sure yeah. they're bigger turkeys on the bigger side of turkeys but they're not but they're not like they're some kind of super species of turkeys or whatever yeah just that it, totally it's, magic. It's disney it, disney doesn't do anything small about two million of them a year are sold every year at disneyland and disney world Holy cow. Okay, so they're, they're hit. I have to say, I've never heard one. I've never had one. And um, whoa, I'm like the only one. Matt, have you had one? I've had a lot of turkey legs in my life. I've never ordered one at Disney, but I'm trying to calculate 2 million times what, 15, 18 bucks for a turkey leg? That's a lot of cash for all those emus. Oh, it's always the cash with Matt. Always <laughs> the cash. Okay, the other rumor, one of the other ones, is that Disney does not pay taxes. What? And that's absolutely a myth. Uh, in fact, Disney did <laughs> recently put out a, a, an economic impact statement of what they what, what they had an uh, an independent economist go through and, and and look at the impact Disney World has on Florida and Central Florida. Uh, in 2022, Disney paid approximately to be looking at my notes. They paid approximately one point one one point one five billion dollars in property taxes to Orange and Osceola counties, as well as to the what we used to be called the Reedy Creek Improvement District, what's now the CFTOD. Uh, the CFTOD is basically Disney's was Disney's utility arm. They build roads, they do sewage, power, all the things you need to run the infrastructure of an incredibly large property that's the size of San Francisco. Uh, they paid about 170 million. The budget for RCID was 170 million and Disney paid about 90% of that. So their taxes are a lot. 
Yeah, that that doesn't sound like someone or a, a corporation that does not pay taxes. How does something like that even get started, Ken? Well, it becomes it's political, Ginger. Let's face it. I mean, you had when you you had the "Don't Say Gay" issue when when Disney spoke out against it, and that's when some of Disney's critics on on the right started speaking out and making these claims because it sounds good. It sure sounds mm. good that Disney's getting away with something, and you know did, what what these people didn't say is, for example, when the the proposal to get rid of RCID and make it uh, the CFTOD. Uh, Orange County School Boards was in a panic because they were worried if the district went away, they'd lose about a hundred million in taxes. Mm -hmm. But that's uh, that's 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 a lot of money right there in just school taxes when you know there's no kids who live at Disney World. Um, <laughs> but that's where it sort of came from. Is that it, it, it sort of came out of that that and you know people just want to believe that corporations you know are getting away with murder. And I'm not saying that Disney doesn't get some special advantages sometimes. So does Universal. Um, so does SeaWorld in some cases, but mostly Universal and Disney because they're the big players. Yeah. Yeah, it, it definitely, it's interesting because you just never know how far the pendulum has swung because they do pay mm -hmm. over a billion in taxes, which sounds like a lot. But it's, you also said in that same paragraph that they're the size of San Francisco. There's billions yeah. of dollars in property on that. So it's hard to, it's hard to calculate as a regular human. Like, is that, is that their fair share of taxes? It does sound like a lot to me, but I don't know. Well, I will tell you that if they were to tax that they'd actually tax themselves and the RCID part of it, the uh, the infrastructure part of it, at what would now be an illegal rate in the state of Florida, they tax themselves far higher than the than the law oh. allows statewide. Oh, all right. Wow. That okay, so we should have just shut our mouths. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, because we're, now we're going to get less. It, I mean, if that's the case, they're going to start paying, you know, less taxes, right? So, because a billion dollars, it doesn't sound like not taxes. I mean, it sounds like a lot of money. Yeah, so, but they, and they are paying the taxes. You said a lot of that goes to Reedy Creek, which does help Disney to have uh, good roads. 170 and, million is, yeah. Um, the, but they're also the number one property taxpayer in Orange and Osceola County. Both And counties. considering what a small amount of Osceola County Disney World's in, that says something yeah. right there. There's, it's only a small corner of Disney that's in Osceola. Yeah, oh, fascinating. <laughs> Okay, now we're going from some real hard numbers to some real hard pirate bones. Here's a question. Are the bones in Pirates of the Caribbean actual human remains? Ken, what say you? This one's true and false, Matt. What? Uh, yeah, oh. it is. Uh, Florida, it's absolutely false. There's no real, real skeletons in the Pirates of the Caribbean at Disney World. When Disneyland's version, the original version, opened in 60 what 67 um there were real skeletons in the caverns their their ride is about a third about a third to a half longer than ours is and it starts going to this grotto section where there's all these skeletal pirates and the idea is these are the ghosts of the pirates that you're about to meet because you're going to go back in time and uh a lot of those pirate skeletons were real provided by ucla medical center when it first opened obviously over the years many decades ago someone realized this is really in bad taste and they removed them many many years ago they're still they trying to save money call. or something like why would you do that they wanted they, they wanted realism they wanted that disney always likes it to be as realistic as possible That's why all <laughs> it, it doesn't get any more real than actual real <laughs> <laughs> i i did not know that is crazy to me so yeah okay so it's from it was from a medical facility it's it's almost akin to using cadavers if you're a medical student only this is a fun ride right <laughs> it's sort of like the body exhibit from that we used to travel around the country Oh yeah, yeah, that was here as well. Mm -hmm. We knew those were real because you expected mm -hmm. it and you went because mm -hmm. it was real. I'm not going to Disney to see. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm just Yeah, not. we don't want to smell no. real rotting flesh in there as this is okay. happening. There's, there's also there's supposedly there's a ghost in there. Dramatic. Right, there's Ken? No, have you ever heard that one? No, uh that's a that's a very big that's a very big myth, at least some most say it's a myth. The story goes, and cast members have told the story for generations at Walt Disney World, that when the ride was being built in 71 and 72, and a construction worker named George either fell to his death or got electrocuted, maybe both, who knows, these things get, get, tort, <laughs> get, get, get you know, why not both? Maybe got run over by the boat too. But what happened was allegedly George was killed in a construction accident and now he haunts the place. You think the haunted man should be the place with the ghosts, but allegedly uh, George still haunts pirates and causes the ride to break down and causes mishaps all over the ride. And every day, the last person out of the building is supposed to say goodbye, good night to George. All the cast members <laughs> still believe this to this day. 
there's only one little problem. There's no record of any kind of getting seriously hurt or killed during the making of the Building of Pirates of the Caribbean at Walt Disney World. Stick with us as we break down the other top myths surrounding Disney World. And boy, are there some doozies. There is a myth, a rumor circulating that his head, his frozen head, is somewhere at Disney. We're separating fact from fiction next. Welcome back to Florida's Fourth Estate. We're breaking down the top myths surrounding Walt Disney World with our in-house Disney expert. We already explored if those turkey legs really come from turkeys, if Disney actually pays taxes, and whether or not those bones inside Pirates of the Caribbean are real skeletal remains. Let's get back to it. Fact or fiction? We have proof this person lived because his name is Walt Disney. <laughs> yeah. There is a myth, a rumor circulating that his head, his frozen head, is somewhere at Disney. Do you think they mean the baseball player Ted Williams, whose <laughs> head is actually frozen somewhere? I, that can't be true, right? It is not at all true. Uh, it, there was a rumor around the time of Walt's death. Walt died in the 1960, uh, 1966 of lung cancer. And ever since he was he died, there's been rumors that he was into cryogenics and he was into, because Walt did legitimately look into a lot of futuristic technologies and was interested, and he was always interested for his life with the future and what technology can bring. But it is absolutely not true that he was his head is under the Cinderella Castle, which is the biggest of those rumors. Uh, he was he was cremated a couple of days after he died. He died of, again. He died of lung cancer, and his wife had him cremated. And he's you can go to the cemetery. I think it's Forest Lawn Cemetery in California. You can, I visited his grave. You can see his grave there. I've heard they put little pieces of his ashes over the fireworks every night, so they spray <laughs> onto the people. Wow! What a romantic wow. gesture! Uh, <laughs> that is so. I don't know where people get this stuff, but I do find it hilarious. Here's another. Well, there are some times. So oh, there sorry, are some times when people will pour out ashes into the haunted mansion, and they have to clean up. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, you're not supposed to. But people bring the ashes of their loved ones to different places, and they do it at Magic Kingdom in particular, and they spread And they have to ask people, please don't put your loved one's ashes anywhere on our property. Oh, man. I swear, and if I'm somebody sure put my ashes in It's a Small World, it would be my arch nemesis. <laughs> Sounds like I have a project now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, do it. Do it. Okay. See, I will haunt your yeah. nightmares. Yeah, That's I know. what will you, happen. You, you haunt my daytime already. So <laughs> <laughs> I do for the foreseeable future. Thank you for clarifying that, Ken. Uh, yeah, that's very good. Here's another one. Number two on our list. Has anyone mm -hmm. ever been pronounced dead at Disney? Because the myth is no one ever has, Ken. And that is absolutely, again, not true. Uh, lots of, several people have been declared dead at Disney. They've had several suicides over the years, which are horrible, of mm. course. But if you know the way the the way the it works when you're pronounced dead is if there's no reason to transport you, you're not going to go to the hospital, and they can't say that you died at the hospital. If you if they bring the hearse, they bring the hearse. Uh, I looked. I did a quick quick research on this when I, when you asked me to look up the stuff up. The earliest reference I can find to a death at Disney was in 1984 in the New York Times. A plane crashed into the Epcot parking lot. And a man was killed there. Uh, excuse me. And a, a woman and a two-year-old died at the hospital later, but a man was actually killed at the scene. Um, and then in 2009, of course, we had one of the most horrific things in Disney history, oh. which was the cr the collision of the mm. two monorails on July 4th. And they were putting the trains away for the night, and a young man named Austin Woonenberg was killed in that crash. And it was just tragic. And everybody involved in the monorail family was just really, really torn up over that and they still remember austin and of course tragically just a few days after pulse we had lane graves a toddler who was killed by an alligator outside the grand floridian so yeah the people have definitely been declared dead on walt disney world property and yeah, unfortunately but, considering how many people they have it's very few people relatively speaking but it does happen it just when you mentioned lane graves that was probably one of the darkest days uh, you know at, at disney in, in recent memory because and to tell the truth everyone thought that was a made up story because it sounded it's like there's no way a gator came and grabbed it and then the dad was fighting the story you know fighting the gator the story mm -hmm. behind it sounded like it was something made up by hollywood and it turned out not to be and it was and it's true but it is one of those things where you just feel you every time about it and you go to a certain part you remember it and it's like that is awful yeah we all wish those things weren't true unfortunately sure. yeah. that did happen and as Ken said, people have been pronounced dead on Disney property. All right. 
our number one myth. I can't even believe people think this because when you walk <laughs> into Magic Kingdom and you see Cinderella's castle, it is massive, right? The rumor is, Ken, the castle can collapse and not because of a hurricane. <laughs> no, that in fact, some some people believe they can come, comes apart in six easy pieces for storage during a hurricane. <laughs> uh, six uh, they, easy they can pieces. actually it can actually pull off the towers and hide them under the tunnels because there is a there is a true re a real myth that there's a uh, an underground city at disney world there is then the magic kingdom is the Attilidors, where they actually do all of the almost all of the uh, uh costuming is down there a lot of the essential services for making the park work are downstairs but no the castle does not come apart it's made of 600 tons of steel it's 190 almost 190 feet tall it's steel and concrete and cement and plaster it is not going anywhere it was designed to handle a cat, cat three cat four hurricane a direct hit with a cat three cat four hurricane which we don't fortunately have very often because usually by the time it comes here to florida to central florida it's usually downgraded you know beyond what it would be when it made yeah. landfall and that's yeah. that's they probably today they'd probably design it for a cat five but they i don't i don't I, do, I wasn't there for shanghai i don't know how they designed the shanghai castle which is the most recent <laughs> man all that steel made of uh, plaster and fiberglass and gypsum that's I mean, crazy if and if you it can't, collapses we have another story if on that collapses head. we're all just going to be a wasteland <laughs> that's for sure and ken you can actually go and stay in that castle correct Every once in a while, by invitation, uh, it was 2006 they finished it. There was a when the castle was designed, Walt Disney was still alive, and Walt wanted to have his own suite in the castle, and it was going to be a place for the Disney family to go. And after he died, the our, the blueprints were already drawn up, but he didn't. They didn't build the suite for the first years of the park. It's where the switchboard operator was for the Magic Kingdom. So this this vast empty room in the middle of the castle which be kind of, kind of be creepy to me <laughs> that, that the switchboard operators up there you know taking your phone calls and, and and routing it to the right department but i think it was 2006 they, they had a thing called the year of a million dreams and every night they let somebody stay they transformed the space into an actual suite called the cinderella dream suite and it's actually very very cinderella themed it's extremely oh. high-end fittings and, and and fixtures and such and actual real beautiful artwork that's from the film and also inspired by the film and yes sometimes people still are allowed to stay up there oh, wow. much better than a call center I agree. <laughs> much what a baller move by disney though like hey uh put my office up in the castle right that's there. where i want it yeah. that's where i'm going to do my zoom meetings uh that's great <laughs> that is such a fantastic list six myths some mildly real most though are just complete <laughs> baloney sandwich i, I want to see one one more fact about this okay ken you're awesome that's a fact Aww. you're sweet Aww. i love working with you guys and thank you for watching florida's fourth estate you can watch it wherever you listen to podcasts or anytime on news six plus and while you're there if theme parks are your thing you can check out this episode where we break down the top five roller coasters right here in florida so this is another one that uh as we move up the list here it's gonna get more intense um but uh iron guazi this one is uh, two on my list uh um, vomit factor of what uh, this is at Bush Gardens, and um, <laughs> you need an iron tummy for this one, huh, Land? Uh, just a little bit. And imagine I, when it first, when it was opening, they put me on it, and I had to interview the uh, one of the developers of it. And he's like, "We can just do the interview on the ride. There's no problem." And I was like, "What?" Um, okay. So I sat there and I was asking him questions, and he's like, "Oh, by the way, you're about to go down a uh, 91 foot drop, which is like pretty much straight down." I was like, um, great, great. This will be fun. <laughs> or join us as we take you inside the Super Nintendo world in California. So we're going to go in the warp tube here. We're here we are, the Princess Post. Peach's Castle. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Hello. Welcome. <gasps> oh my gosh. <gasps> That's fantastical. I'm going to have Jim just pan real quick, <laughs> give you an overshot of it. All this is going to sink literally up to the app where you're gonna be on a leadership board, you're gonna get stamps from your visit. So it's, and then everybody in here is also playing games. So it's literally just a, who's winning in this in this whole land, so. Yeah, it, it is, I love how you just get to be a kid again. Central Florida yeah. is gonna be beautiful when it, when it arrives, so. 
Again, the Florida's Fourth Estate podcast can be downloaded from wherever you listen to podcasts, or you can watch it anytime on News 6 Plus or our YouTube channel.